Hello and welcome to a new adventure. Now today we're starting a brand new series or railway series and we're going to be looking at the Leeds new line. Now I know a lot of you in the comments have been pestering me to do this for a long time. So here we are down in Murfield or just outside Murfield again. If you remember we were here to look at the Robin Hood's grave not long ago. Well we're just outside Murfield in an area called Heaton Lodge. Well, that's what the junction name is around here anyway. So where we are is roughly where the Leeds New Line left the main uh, Brighouse to Murfield route here. Above, it's above my head, above this tunnel. It left the line just a couple of hundred yards to my left here and then branched off towards Murfield before curving off up the hill and onwards to Leeds. So the whole route of the Leeds New Line was basically from here to the city centre of Leeds. Now you may remember uh, my Holbeck viaduct video, or the Farnley viaduct, whatever you want to call it. That was actually uh, used by this line here. It was one of the options it had anyway. So we've covered the very end of it, but we're going to make our way all the way from here, right through to the uh, centre of Leeds and the Farnley station that was down there. That'll be the finale video. So there's going to be plenty of videos to come, and I'm not sure how long it's going to take us to do it, but we're here on a wet, miserable March day and we're going to basically walk the whole route and see what we can find and I'm going to show you guys everything that we have to offer and tell you everything about this line as well. Now I'm kindly joined today by a guest and now this, this fellow runs the Leeds New Line Appreciation Society Facebook group. That's a tongue twister. So I'm going to introduce you to Richie. So there's Richie. He's going to be showing us around the line. Now, I have done my own research, but this man knows everything there is to know about this line. So hopefully, we're going to be able to bring that to you guys. Anyway, enough talking. Shall we get going? Right, so we're down here at Heaton Lodge Junction, or near it anyway. And it's a really wet, miserable day. I've even got an umbrella today, which I've never, ever took on a vlog before. It's wet, it's windy, and it's cold. But we're just making our way up this beautiful structure here. Now check that out. This is one of the remaining footbridges over the old Leeds New Line. Not many of these left these days, but I am told that this is under threat from demolition. So hopefully I'm capturing it before it may be lost forever. Right, so we're looking down the only remaining section that we're aware of of the Leeds New Line here. So right ahead of us is what you can see is a double bore tunnel. Now I am told by Richard that that is under threat of demolition as well, as well as this bridge. They are electrifying these lines, which means they're going to have to demolish a lot of the old infrastructure around here. But what you're seeing in front is what remains of the only section of the Leeds new line that is still in use today. So the line would have left in front of us on the left, just after or just before the double bore tunnel up there and then headed off down this way and towards Murfield straight ahead. So as you can see, the line still remains today. So the line today is actually the Leeds to Huddersfield line that you're looking at down here. And you've got the Calder Valley line up on the hill there on the embankment. There's some original railway cottages over there as well. And there's the tunnel down there where I started the video in. But anyway, we're going to head a bit further up the track and hopefully show you some of the remains a bit further on. Uh, one more look at the bridge. Like I said, that is going to be going, we think. And then just down here, we've got some original railway railings. <laughs> now these are quite old, as you can see, but he said that they're quite distinctive along this line. So we're going to be seeing a lot of these, apparently, on our journey onwards. Just thought I'd show you a quick shot of this while we're here. You can see the River Calder behind us and it's flooded to hell. Not as bad as it can be, but it is flooded. It's only been raining a little bit. Right, so we've made our way a bit further up the line. Uh, the footbridge that we were at is just down there to my right. And we stood at where the Leeds New Line would have left the bank in here. So I'll just show you ahead. So this is the only section that I was talking about that remains of the Leeds New Line and it now just joins back onto the main line there. But right about here is where the two lines of the Leeds New Line would have come towards us. 
and headed off towards Murfield and the viaduct this way. So we're going to do a bit of an explore in these trees because we've already seen on the way up quite a few railway relics. While we're here, Richard's just pointed out there's uh, an old plate layers hut, what we think on the map was a plate layers hut. And there's some foundations of a building here. So we've, we've put two and two together and come to the conclusion that this is it. Okay, so we've headed through the trees a bit further on the old track bed. And you can just see there's the River Calder again down there. And we found the start of what was the Battyford Viaduct, which is where it used to span across the River Calder in that direction towards Murfield. And we found the uh, start of the viaduct here. So you can see the uh, wall on this side, which is in pretty good nick actually. And then the other one is just down here. And I'll also give you a side view. Now obviously the viaduct is long gone, but there is a lot of remains left of this viaduct. So you've got this on this side, and then you've got a piece on the other side, and then another piece towards the uh, main main road through Murfield as well. I'll just show you down here. It's got a nice lovely flowing stream down there. But there's what remains of the viaduct. And if you just look over there, you can see the other side of it from here. Shall I get you a better shot there? So I'm just making my way up onto the very edge of the viaduct here. You can see Richie's braving it, stood on the edge. Nearly fell in. <laughs> Don't want to fall, not down there. Richie said there's a piece of girder bridge. Let's have a look at that. Now it's probably a 50 foot drop down there. 40, 50, I'm not, I'm not going to fall down there. But anyway, I'll zoom in for you. Can you see a piece of the old girder bridge there? So obviously that's where we'd have gone over to the other side and directly on the other side would have been the first station on the line, which is the Battyford station. Right, so we're heading on to the other side of the viaduct and we've just spotted this, or Richard did, and we think, well it is, I don't think, an old mile marker and it's stuck in the ground here, a nice piece of stone that, you can see the paint's gone. But uh, yeah, I mean, Richie's been up here a million times and he said he's never seen this. So nice little find there. So here's a nice shot of the bridge from down by the riverside, or the viaduct, should I say. A nice, massive abutment for you there, everyone. <laughs> I know you love me saying that. Yeah, it's quite a high bridge, actually. I didn't realize how big it was. But it's in quite a good nick, like I keep saying. On the other side, it's not so good, but uh, Richie was just saying that he knocks a lot of it down because of the industrial units over there. But you can see a lot of the uh, fallen stone down here, the block work that's come off the bridge. I keep saying bridge, the viaduct. And we've got what we like to find across streams and things. Nice bridge made out of sleepers there. Probably not old ones, but you never know. And there's the pile of blocks again up to the section of we were stood on earlier on with the uh, bit of the girder left. Anyway, Richie's now going to take us somewhere over there. But before we do, I'm going to show you a picture that was taken from just behind us here of this viaduct looking this way. So I'll see you on the other side.
right, so we've made it down to Huddersfield Road. We're now at the other side of the river and the viaduct. So this is where the viaduct would have ended, just here. And then there would have been another viaduct across the road here and up to the station, which is up there. So what we're going to do is just take an explore of what's left of this viaduct and then we're going to head up there and I'll show you the station or what remains. Now, as you can see today, many businesses occupy these arches over here. Like I say, it's really hard to get in there now, but what I'm going to do is just show you down here. It's now used as a bit of a dumping ground, but there's built a false floor here to support buildings and things underneath or to cover something up. But them arches are quite deep down there. But there's the, this side of the viaduct and then it comes to an abrupt end down there, which we'll take you and show you now. And you can see there, so this would have been the old blue brick stone viaduct that went that way towards the uh, Batty Ford station. And then it was a girder bridge across Huddersfield Road and the station came out onto that as well. And then it turns into sort of an embankment down there, we think, and there's just a bit of the embankment left. And then you hit the main viaduct across the River Calder that we looked at. So like I say, it's really hard to get to this side with it being industrial now. But this is all remains anyway of this side. And like I was just saying, that's the remains of the embankment there in that private yard. And then you would have had obviously the viaduct starting across the river that way. Right, so we're making our way up from Huddersfield Road up to the station. Now, just before we get to the station, I just want to tell you a couple of little stories about the viaduct behind us. So the girder section that spanned across the river Calder, Richie tells me, apparently, we think, I'm not sure, that was actually reused. It was shipped off to Ireland where they reused it on a bridge because it was a good piece of solid steel girder across the river, why not? And also, there's another rumour about the viaduct behind us, the brick section. Apparently, the company that they contracted to knock it down, probably in the late 60s, 70s, they actually went bankrupt trying to demolish it because it was so hard to shift it. Hence why it's still there today and why it's still left. And we're now up at the level or platform level of where Batty Ford Station was. Now, just behind the camera in front or over there, there used to be a large goods site as well with sidings and a goods shed. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But right where we stood now is what remains of the old station site. So the viaduct would have been at the end of that, all them uh, hedges up there. So it would have spanned across the road and then headed off that way across the river. Now the main road is just down there. So what you're seeing here is a, an abrupt end, which we'll take a look at in a minute. We'll take a walk down there and I'll show you this. But right up here is where the station platforms were. And then obviously the line then headed off in that direction and curved away. But while we're here, Richie's just shown me this, which looks suspiciously like the platform edge buried in the grass here. So you would have had the tracks down here, obviously, we think. And then maybe a wooden platform this side or stone and they've just demolished it or something like that. We're not quite sure without looking at, at the pictures closer. But we think that is the edge of the platform there. It would it would work out anyway. And uh, there's nothing on this side that we can see anyway, but as you can see, there's a lot of uh, overgrowth. And then over here is what Richie said is the old original station entrance with the the iconic blue or oh, bluey gray brick for this line, which you'll see a lot in the bridges later on. But there you go. That's the original station entrance, an original wall, and also more iron railings that Richie was saying earlier on. There's plenty of them on this route heading down there. So what we're gonna do is take a detour down there and I'm just gonna show you the side of the station building at the bottom of the support. Okay, so we've made it down to the side of the main road here and you've got the remains of the viaduct that we just looked at and then also the old station entrance here with the path leading up the side there up to where we were and the station would have been up there at the top now Richie says says that the station used to actually jut out across the road a little bit on a, a viaduct so the station probably would have been right up here but anyway let's take a wonder and you can see the old uh, viaduct wall remains down here what's left of it anyway. Now here we're looking down the side of the station building, so the station would have been up there on the top. And look at these old archways, I'll zoom in for you and you can see them. So they're the old uh, 
archways at the side of the station, probably used to store coal in there. And there was an old staircase that went up the side as well with a canopy over it to the platforms on this side. It's just started raining, the heavens have opened, so excuse the hood. But we're right on the site now where the goods shed would have been, just behind the Battyford station. So the station is behind us up there, and the lines would have curved towards us here on this side, and then you had all the sidings here. And there was a large goods shed somewhere around here. We're not exact sure, but I'd say right in the middle here. And then just up there is what remains of the old retaining wall at the back of the goods yard. Okay, so we've headed out of the goods yard site and the lines would have come sort of from this end towards us here. And at this point, somewhere here was the bridging point where it jumped onto a large viaduct spanning across the valley here. And I'll show you a picture of that now. This area is known as New Scarborough in Murfield. So we've reached what is now known as Doctor Lane, just round the corner from where I was a minute ago. And I'm just going to show you a picture of the bridge that spanned the road here as it crossed over in front of us. Now obviously today there's nothing left of that and uh, so that's why I'm showing you a picture but then we're going to head up to Knoll Road which will be the last port of call in Murfield before we then head on out of Murfield and towards Heckmanwijk. Okay we're currently on Parker Lane. Now the viaduct that I was just talking about would have ended somewhere down here behind these houses as it spanned across the valley but there's nothing left of that at all which is why we didn't show anything and right here the line would have made its way into a cutting underneath and this would have been a road bridge here underneath and you can just see the wall opposite there that remains now there's not much left in terms of railway remains around this area so I'm, I'm re really scraping at the barrel to show you these things but that is definitely the railway bridge and there would have been a deep cutting on that side Obviously now all new houses and filled in. Now what we're going to do is make our way up to where Northorpe station would have been, which is a bit further up. Now between here and there it's a fair distance, so I'll show you on the maps where we're heading. But there's not much left, hence why we're going to skip all this out. It's all been obliterated by new house builds and, you know, lovely little areas now, if you want to call them lovely. That's what is built on the site and the embankments have gone and everything. So we're going to skip all that and head on up to the next point which is the Northorpe station. So we're going to see you up there and we're also going to be joined by another guest. <laughs> 